Good morning, everyone. I'm uh, Stephen Aaron, and it's my pleasure to, as President and CEO of the Autry Museum of the American West, to welcome everyone for day two of the inaugural Marshall McKay Seminar for Empowering Native Knowledge. Um, I want to start by thanking um, Joe Horsecapture for astutely assembling the program uh, yesterday and today, um, to Ben Fitzsimmons, uh, to Rob Gallagher, to Britt Campbell, to Robbie Ragasa, to Gloria Mejia, to Wendy Essenston for their uh, expert programming uh, of all things here, other than the temperature in the room, which seems to be out of our control again. Um, it's not, maybe not, I'm not quite sure if it's as cold as here as it was yesterday in the Resources Center, but we'll keep everyone alert and the blood pumping. Uh, I want to thank also the San Manuel Band of Mission Indians for their generous support of the McKay Seminar. And I also want to thank the family of Marshall McKay um, for everything and for everything that Marshall McKay did for this institution uh, and for Indian peoples around California and the nation. Um, I don't want to try to recap yet um, all that we did yesterday, but it was really quite a, a wonderful day of presentations, beginning with the keynote uh, that Rick West offered, and then concluding with the, uh, I guess it wasn't a valedictory lecture yet, but it was the end of that day uh, by James, Henry, James Pepper Henry, um, that I think together spotlighted the transformations of museums, in some sense, or of native museums in particular, that began with the founding of the National Museum of the American Indian, and I think has now reached its next iteration with the opening of the first Americans Museum in Oklahoma City. Um, in between, I should, well, I should say, and I think everyone in this room, um, including myself, has now put that museum on our travel itineraries. Um, I know I'll be there in June, and I hope, I expect most of the people in this room will also make it there soon if they haven't already been there, because certainly um, Jim's presentation yesterday uh, offered a quite a tease. Uh, so thank you for that. Um, in between, we were treated to presentations, and I think even more to conversations that amplified the changes to museology uh, that have, um, challenged the paradigms that long governed um, how museums operated and, and, how, and, and governed uh, the relations between native peoples and museums, uh, to conversations and presentations that addressed the hurdles and opportunities that confront the creators and curators of new tribal museums and of those who work in new positions in old museums. Um, and I think we'll hear some more of that today, as well as us broadening out into the realms of native art and artists. Um, one of my takeaways, though, yesterday, and it, it sort of actually transcends a conversation about native museums or native peoples in museums, and speaks more broadly to uh, the role of museums in, in our society. And that's, I think, something that my predecessor, uh, or I should say no individual, has played, I think, a larger role in the reassessment uh, of the role of museums in our society, a larger role than uh, Rick West. Uh, I won't reiterate the points that I made about Rick yesterday in my introductory remarks, but I, I would again emphasize Rick's contributions to museum practice and positioning that extend, as I said, well beyond the realm of Native American affairs. That is, in particular, his insistence that museums be a place to present diverse stories together and a forum in which challenging topics could be discussed in a safe and civil atmosphere. In fact, let me quote directly here from Rick's uh, keynote address yesterday, and I think I got the words straight, because I think those, these words serve as an inspiration not only for this symposium, but really a broader aspiration for what, must, for what museums must be going forward. Quote, 
We struggle in the 21st century and on a global basis to find and implement civil, civic and social space, those gathering places for discussion, discourse, debate, even controversy, but always a forum and safe place for unsafe ideas concerning cultural history and human experience. For the Autry Museum, this means tackling sometimes clashing perspectives while ensuring that the goal of all our gatherings, and Rick, I'm quoting you here, and you're walking in right on schedule, <laughs> uh, that the goal is to shed light, not simply generate heat, as I think too often is what's, what, what passes for debate in our society today, heat, not light. I think our aim is light, not heat. Um, and that commitment, which Rick has made so central to the Creative Museum, certainly informs, certainly informed the proceedings yesterday, and I think it informs the proceedings today, and I think it informs everything we strive to do at the Autry. Um, no doubt some topics and presentations will prompt, should prompt, disagreements. But we follow Rick West in the belief that we can take we can take, we can tackle these challenges on while maintaining a respectful dialogue as we learn from one another and share these experiences as a community. It's that diversity of views that forces us to think and to remain engaged. And it is, as I like to say, what will make the Autry Museum matter more to more people. So I would like to now introduce uh, Tongva member Virginia Carmelo, who will provide us with some good words to start the day. Meiha eo eham. Greetings, friends. I'm going to share with you a land acknowledgement, but I'm uh, also going to um, share a few words from um, some people who were here yesterday. I'm honored to be here to acknowledge our land and our ancestors. Their presence here as the original inhabitants, heirs, and caretakers of our traditional ancestral tribal lands has been since time immemorial. Importantly and historically, these lands have never been ceded. We are known by several names, today more commonly as the Tongva, or Tongve, as my ancestors before me would have said it, and it conveys the meaning of people of the earth. Our Tongve ancestors thrived in a rich and dynamic culture with a network of nearly 100 known villages and an economic trading system that interacted with all of Southern California and beyond. The Autry National Museum of the American West lies within the neighboring village of Maungna. Maungna is, uh, would be, sound like uh, the tree trunk area, or basically right here along the river where many, many trees uh, grow. Allow me to give you an accurate description of Tovangar, our Tongva tribal ancestral lands. It covers the entire Los Angeles Basin and four of the Southern Channel Islands. We identify this today as the greater part of Los Angeles and Orange Counties and parts of Riverside and San Bernardino Counties. Also, our lands are defined by natural geographic borders. To the north, we are bordered by what we call today the Santa Susana Mountains. The entire San Fernando Valley was home to many of our Tongva villages, such as Tuhunga, Kawinga, and Pokoinga. And you may recognize these today as Tahunga, Kawenga, and Pokoima. Towards the east, we have our San Gabriel Mountains, which we call Hachaiyuat. Some villages are Haramunga, Ashusanga, Kukamonga, all the way to Horuvna. And today we call these Red Box, Azusa, Cucamonga, and Horupa. To the south, we have our natural features and boundaries of today's San Joaquin Hills and Santiago Peak, all the way to Aliso Creek, 
I come to you today from Hutukna, which you know as Anaheim. On the west, we have our coastal villages, one being Topanga, you may call it Topanga. And we have our few, four beautiful islands, the largest being Pimu, which we call Catalina Island. We are proud that Tovangar ha is and has always been a flourishing center of abundance and creativity. I'd like to read to you uh, at this moment uh, what was prepared yesterday by uh, Mr. Craig Torres of our uh, Tongva Cultural Collective. Thanks to Rick West for providing a voice and much overdue seat at the table and listening to the community needs by initiate, initiating an MOU with the Tongva community, the first of its kind with any museum institution in the Los Angeles Basin, setting a precedence for other institutions to soon follow. Thanks to Joe Horse Capture for opening the door even further, nurturing a permanent ongoing relationship to the Tongva community as not only shareholders or community partners, but as co-curators and interpreters of culture and history in our own collective voices for the future generations to come. I'd like to add also thanks to Mr. Marshall McKay and his family for their ongoing work. Uh, the blessing and acknowledgement that Craig writes reads, we come together in this space to honor the ancestors of this landscape and this institution. We come humbly honoring and acknowledging your existence for sustaining us humans on this mother earth, who without your gifts, knowledge, and teachings, we would not exist. We ask to come together in one mind, one heart, moving into the future, changing the way museum institutions are represented and changing the narrative to give voice to the first people, the first humans of this land a narrative that gives a much more equitable and inclusive history or story of this land, Tovangar. Awesh koneha te kopo e ha. Thank you very much, and may it be well. Good morning, everybody. My name is My name is Joe Horsecapture. I am Vice President of Native Collections and Curator of the Amundsen. What am I? Amundsen Curator of Native History and Culture. Um, as Stephen mentioned, we had a great day yesterday at the RC, and I. This is actually the first time I've stood on this stage since I've been here, and. I'm running the first session, then my colleague Karima will run the second, and I'm very happy I'm only running the first session because I know these steps are gonna give me some issues. <laughs> As I walk up, I know I'm gonna trip, so I'm glad I'm only gonna be up here once. So before we get started, just a few housekeeping messages. Today we have an in-person audience and more than 200 people watching on Zoom from around the country. We sent out notifications to over 70 tribal colleges and tribal museums across the country, hoping they'll be part of this event. The structure for today is that there will be a series of presenters followed by a panel and audience Q&A. If you're on Zoom, you can add your questions to the Q&A box and we'll get to it as many as we can. The link you were sent in your, um, please sign in for the afternoon session using the link you were sent in your registration for that session. If you haven't registered yet, please do so on the Autry website. Please note it is specific daylight time, not standard time, but daylight time. All sessions are recorded and will be available online in early May, and everyone who is registered will be notified. For the in-person audience, restrooms, are through the doors to the side of the theater lobby. And there's water and coffee available in the lobby. Lunch will be served across the plaza from the cafe during the break, yay for free lunch. Um, I'd also like to take this opportunity 
to thank the San Manuel Band of Mission Indians for their financial support of this seminar.